Welcome back to the bluegrass this beautiful September day. This is the first in a series we're doing this fall where my main man George uh, learns how to train personal protection dogs and what we consider traditional guard dogs. Now we do not do this for the public. We don't do it for a living. My son's just at that age where he thinks uh, that kind of stuff's cool. So we're going to do a few dogs this fall. So there's no need to send me an email. There are plenty of people in your area I'm sure that like training dogs like this because we like training labs as far as the we being me and my wife okay because we're old and we like nice little dogs that love to come out and hang around. Uh, George, he's a, you know, he's a teenager, so he likes dogs that are high strung and uh, want to chase and bite stuff. Okay, so I'll introduce Lexi right now. Lexi used to belong to a friend of mine. He had to move off for work. Uh, she's a pretty good dog. Uh, she's a Dutch Shepherd. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a Dutch Shepherd is, it's uh, kind of like a German Shepherd, but on steroids and crack. And everything Lexi does, she does at 110 miles an hour. Now, George is used to walking a lot of dogs, and a lot of them are pretty athletic, but none of them are quite as drivey or uh, like <laughs> springy as these dogs. So I'm I'm going to walk this dog and uh, then I'm going to let George walk her and then we're going to go over and we're going to start playing some fetch with her and I'm just going to kind of talk you talk to you about the differences between trying to train this type of dog and a sporting dog. All right so come on Lexi. Now one of the things that you'll notice immediately about a dog like Lexi is everything that she does is like fast and springy. So getting her to be able to come out here and walk on our little course, which is pretty challenging for most types of dogs, for her this is super boring. Okay, like from her perspective, this is like kindergarten level stuff. She doesn't even see any reason to doing it. It's not challenging to her at all. You know, she just wants to get done with it so she can get to chasing uh, like the ball or the dummy or something like that. She also likes to beat up other dogs. So she might be looking over here to the kennel every so often, hoping that a dog's gonna come out the door so she can beat it up, which is another reason that most people in the dog kenneling business don't really like fooling with these Dutch Shepherds or Malinois, you know because they are rough on the other dogs. But look at what's happening here. You see how she's just kind of rushing me through the course and she's like, come on, let's go, old man. <sighs> well, like normally what would happen here when we're working dogs, if we have one that's kind of going too fast, we'll get us a treat out and we'll kind of hold that treat down here, right? <laughs> <laughs> and say, hey, look, I've got a treat. And the dog will go, oh, a treat. I'll slow down and I'll try to get the treat. Look at Lexi. She's like, uh, yeah, so what? I don't really care about that treat. All right, now, but what she does care about are uh, things like this, right? Yeah, so come look at this focus on her eyes, Amy. Like, look, guys. Like, so if I have something like this, then she gets super excited. Now you'll see a lot of people do something and I consider kind of a mistake when they're working these dogs, which is to try to work on like calm, attentive, and polite obedience with this as the promise of a motivator. What ends up happening is these dogs end up getting just, they're just, it just tears them up. They get real anxious and so they're constantly forging. And, and so like, I don't like like doing this kind of stuff here where I'm pretending I'm gonna throw the ball. What I like to do is I like to take these kind of dogs and use an attrition strategy where I'm going to play fetch with her here in a little while, but we're not going to play fetch until she has calmed down and she's done the course with a modicum of control, okay? So I'll come out here and sometimes I'll walk a dog like Lexi like, you know, 20 times if I have to, up and down the hill, around the course, up and down the hill, around the course. And then when she's calm, uh, I'll go over and I'll try to practice getting her to calmly hold the retrieving item or the tug. And uh, then once she's shown me that she's made some progress towards being calm uh, when, she, when presented with the retrieving item or the tug, then I will take her into a more active behavior like uh, actual fetching, okay? So, this right here for us, what we do is we just keep walking them until they calm down, and that's our primary strategy. Okay, we think that's the best strategy, so that's the one we're going to be using over the fall. I've got another little dog in there named Goose. I'll show you the, the same way. I'm going to turn this over to George, though, so he can walk her on this course a few times because I'm kind of getting old, and these uh, trips around the course are starting to add up on me. So I'm going to put her up here. Stay, and uh, my main man George can take over. All right, so you guys will notice that uh, George comes up, and George has uh, his mom has bought him a vest. It's very similar to mine, so you know he thinks that he's going to take over the business here soon. Uh, okay, Georgie, go ahead and start walking her. 
Now, one of the things you'll probably notice is that uh, Lexi gives George a little bit of a hard time. Uh, she might even start kind of rearing up on him and trying to get those dummies out of, her po out of his uh, pouches. That's what she was doing to him earlier. Now, what George has to be very careful about as he's doing these uh, exercises is that he doesn't talk to her too excitedly. You know, George is at that age where, like, uh, his vocal inflection, the control of his voice, and his posture, you know, he's not a very big guy, so not, uh, he doesn't have a lot of presence. And so he has to really double down and make sure that he's communicating what's expected in a very clear and concise manner, okay? And ultimately, guys, that just comes from practice. You just got to get out here and you just got to put in that work, okay? Now, remember what I was telling you about, you know, making sure that you use calm motivators when you want calm behavior. Uh, George has his uh, tugs with him, and he has a barbell with him, and he has his dummies with him. We like for the dog to know that those are going to come into play at some point in the future, but we do not like to stimulate them with those items uh, while we're working on healing or uh, balancing on items that are high off the ground. We just find that that creates uh, kind of a hectic state in the dog, and it doesn't do much for our long-term goals of giving us a dog that's calm, attentive, and polite, okay, but uh, can engage in, uh, you know, high-energy protective behavior if needed, okay? So, George seems to be doing pretty well. Okay, now, George, if you can make it around the course, I want you to put the leash, like, hang it on your finger a little bit, and if you can make it around the course with just the leash pretty much hanging on your hand, then we will move over here and we will show them about uh, fetching with these kind of dogs. Very nice. Now George might have to, uh, he might have to adjust his pace a little bit because Lexi's a fast, fast walker. And if he tries to make her walk real slow, they're going to get into a little bit of conflict. We can work on that later. Oh, and you see like right there, she got in a little bit of hurry and George was just a little behind her and so she didn't, she didn't exit that um, teeter-totter exactly right. Slow her down there just a little bit, Georgie. Easy. Easy. Take your, take your right hand and put it in front of her a little bit. Oh, now see, that's what happens if you get in a hurry. Okay, come back here. Now take your right hand stop sign her. Wait. There you go. Let her sit there for a second and calm down. Sometimes you just have to take you a little time out. It's kind of like uh, in sports when the tempo was working against you. Sometimes you just have to, to, to say, time out. Let's uh, take a second. Think about this. All right, now she seems to be calm, so take off again. Easy. Wait. Very nice. Very good. Make sure she doesn't get after the pig. Up, up. Now come on around the uh, A-frame here, the small A-frame. Watch out, cameraman, you're going to trip over the pig, over the mimic table. Very nice. And then put her on the exam table and have her stay and walk away from her. And remember, when you're, now you have to get you a little better, better entry than that, dude. There you go. Stop sign, Darth Vader hand. Lay your leash on the table. Now, as you leave, don't pay attention to her. Look at her out of the corner of your eye because you don't need a dog to stay when you're staring at them. That's the worst way in the world to teach stays, by staring at a dog, because then the day that you're not staring at her and you're getting something out of your truck, she'll think she's not supposed to stay. All right, that's pretty good. Now let's go over here and uh, talk about some fetching. All right, George, you put her up here on the mimic table and uh, take her leash off. Okay, now I want you guys to watch something. Now George is gonna take her leash off and uh, now she knows that uh, she's going to get to play fetch here in a second. So watch how excited she gets. Kind of move out of the way, Georgie, so they can see. You know, look out. She's walk. Just walk out there, Georgie, around in the grass, you know. <laughs> and y'all watch her. Just, just walk all the way, all around out in there, Georgie. Yeah, so uh, this is basically what happens. When she thinks that uh, there's fetching involved, then she is just going to be like super focused and all over the place. Now, the problem with this is, come on, we'll go on down here. Georgie, walk on down there past the rubber dummy. 
you guys watch all the way down here she's going to be super fixated on george now if you ever wonder why you see so many dog trainers with uh dutch shepherds and malinois and border collies uh well this is why guys you know it makes you look like you're an expert dog trainer just because <laughs> the kind of dog that you picked all right so you can tell george is engaged is what they call it we think that's a silly word but like uh okay come over this way a little bit georgie right here in the middle of the field all right cameraman you come over this way george back up <laughs> back up this way a little bit get kind of close but camera i want you to be able to see george's whole body and uh so george take your take your uh dummy and uh throw it out there just a little ways in front of you and guys you see how that dog just takes off after that dummy and then she's going to run back here and it's going to be kind of helter skelter now georgie when she brings that back to you i want you to turn around to the cameraman okay so throw it again Okay, so there she goes, 100 miles an hour. <laughs> and as she comes back, turn around here, Georgie. And I want you guys to watch as the way she tries to get George to get it. Notice that she's kind of biting on it. She basically what happened when she was young, and a lot of these dogs do this. They, uh, guys, they just love to bite and they want to fetch so much that uh, they kind of get excited and they start uh, like clomping at it. And if you put your hand down there, if, you don't, if you're not careful, then like they bite you you know, or they put it down on the ground and they expect you to pick it up. Go to pick it up, but don't pick it up, Georgie. Now, right here sometimes what happens is that, you know, like you go to pick it up and if you have a mal or a Dutch Shepherd, it runs over there to get the fetching item at the same time you're picking it up and then the dog bites you. And you think, oh, my dog bit me. These guys are just careless because, uh, like I said, they're on steroids and crack. They want to go so fast all the time. One of the things we work on here, guys, with the dogs that have a lot of drive like that and are very oral, is we really try to get them to calm down and focus and be in control of their, uh, like their mouth, where their mouth is. Go over there, cameraman, see her face a little bit. So see, I'm having George ignore her. And watch how she's kind of nervous. The camera's going to come over there. Reach down there like you're going to pick it up again, Georgie. See if she look at it, start backing up, and then she grabs it and picks it up. What we want to do over the course of the next few weeks, circle around her there. What we want to do over the course of the next few weeks is teach her like to take all that drive and energy and put it into the retrieve, okay? But the delivery, we want to be calm. So we'll go back up to the mimic table and we'll work on a nice calm delivery right now. All right, Georgie, have her get up on the mimic table. Okay, now see how she, as she hopped up there, guys. She Look, see how she... Put, put your hand back there, Georgie. Have her hop up there and watch how reckless she is. See how reckless she is with how she's, like, grabbing that? That's one of the most common complaints that I see in the emails is uh, people have uh, Malinois, Dutch Shepherds, uh, some working bloodline German Shepherds, and they're just so quick to grab and bite. You see how that is? And guys, she's not, I mean, she's not really trying to be mean to George. She loves George. She loves playing with George, but that's what it's like. Can you see that, cameraman? Like, that's what it's like to try to play with these guys. I mean, like, you watch on, you watch on the YouTube and you have one of these dogs and you're like, dang, you know, why is this dog keep biting me? Why is she being so rough? Well, they just, they're just like that, guys. They just are really high energy, high strung dogs love to fetch all right so what i'm going to have george do is i'm going to have him take and work on just getting the dog to be calm take your dummy away georgie all right so i'm going to put this uh this this small slip lead on her okay and what i'm going to have george do is stand here like this now remember how i'm always talking to you about your energy goes down the leash into the dog okay a big mistake here guys is this so you have a high strung dog like this you give them this they're rough with your fingers or something and then you're like nah 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 no okay it just makes them more hectic hectic next time okay you have to be really calm and really focused if you want this exercise to go smoothly. It's not that you can't get it by being a little bit hectic yourself, but you're just creating work for yourself. So I'm gonna have George put his hand in this uh, small slip lead, right? And he's gonna calmly present the retrieving item to the dog. And then he's gonna like try to send some positive vibrations down through this leech. <laughs> now, whether this is gonna work, who knows? But that's, that's our goal. So we're gonna go with the double finger cross again. Take it, good, stay. Now look, I'm gonna put just a little bit of tension right here and I'm gonna take this hand and I'm gonna very gently just stroke the dog. And in my mind, I'm gonna put a count on this. And my count is 10. Once I get to 10, let me move this way so you can see. Then I'm gonna ask her to give it away, right? By putting my hand on it. 
Now, if you trained as many dogs as I train, then you would realize why I need that dog to hand that to me. I need them to hand it to me because I get tired of bending over, okay? Now, so trust me, over the lifetime of a dog like this, they fetch so much. Let me scoot her around this way a little bit. They fetch so much that you'll, get, you'll go down in the back uh, if you want to tire this dog out with fetching and she won't hand it to you calmly. Take it, good, stay. Good, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now you only might get to one or two guys, maybe 0 0.5, I don't know, but you have to start somewhere. All right, so George is gonna use that technique and uh, I've got some bandages over here for when his hand starts bleeding, but I'm gonna go with a double finger cross and hopefully that won't happen. Now George is left-handed, so this is a little backwards for him. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Release. Good. Now keep that tension on the leash. You see, when he took that, uh, when he took that dummy away, she went to jump off the table. That's because my buddy made a real big mistake with her when she was little, which was to uh, like uh, let her spit that out. Like he kind of made her, you know, come over and hand it to him a little bit, but she would like spit it at him, and then he would grab at it, and then it was all a hectic deal, and she would back up five or six feet and be ready to spring into action to fetch it again. Okay, one more time, Georgie. One, two. Three, slow that petting down. Three, four, five, six. Now this is similar to the inductive re retrieve that we do with food, with the lab, guys. Good, there you go, good. Out, very nice, stay calm, stay focused. Put, put the slack back in your leash. Good job, put all the slack back in your leash. And then present it again. Little tension, one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and release. Okay, now guys, really you need to do that just uh, you know like a bunch of times every day. Just a bunch of short sessions, three to five reps per session. You can do ten sessions a day if you want. Now we're going to go back down to the yard and we're going to do a little. Uh, we're going to do a little fetching and we're going to see if we can tie that exercise into the actual fetching because once the dog realizes that uh, being calm, attentive, and polite leads to more fetching, then they'll be able to harness that, uh, that energy and put it all into the retrieving and they'll be really nice on the, uh, uh, the release. Okay, now guys, as we're walking back down here, <laughs> You watch. This dog's going to bully George. He'll probably jump up and bite him a couple of times, but uh, I ain't going to say much because in the dog business, you just kind of got to learn by doing. You know how I'm always with the puppies. We're always learning by doing, right? Uh, well, in the dog business, especially when you're dealing with these high strung dogs, it's all learning by doing. Okay, here, let me see your retrieving item there, Georgie. Now, <laughs> Now, so this happens to this will happen to you guys too. What happened was George is kind of walking around and, and the camera wasn't on when this happened. He was walking around, wasn't thinking, and the dog jumped up and snapped at the uh, at the at the retrieving item and got his hand. And so then George got a little gun shy and the dog's jumping around him. He starts to bring the retrieving item up to his chest, kind of up by his face. You know, and that's even worse because these dogs are bad about what they call face clomping, jumping up and snapping at your face anyway. Okay, so like, look, I've, I've got to be careful right here because if I do this a little bit like the wrong way, she's going to hop up here and try to get it because she doesn't have very good impulse control yet. That's what we're trying to accomplish with the small challenges course. All right. So I'm going to show George how to do this a couple of times. You go ahead and stay there, cameraman. Uh, and uh, hopefully... Hopefully, hopefully, uh, George will get the hang of this and won't lose any fingers. So I'm going to take this dog, and I've got this little slip lead on her. Watch her. See, see how she's trying to get away from me a little bit? Because all she wants to do right now is chase. And what I have to do is convince her that the chasing and the waiting patiently are directly tied together. Okay, so I've got a hold of my little slip lead now. So I'm going to bring her into this position. Get up here, nerd. And I'm going to have to ask her to stay right here. Now, I know when I throw this, at least, you know, four out of five times, she's going to try to get away, but she can't get away because I have a hold of her, right? Okay, so I'm going to tell her to stay. Oh. And I'm going to throw the retrieving item. And see, she tried to get away, right? She can't go anywhere 
because uh, I got a hold of her neck. And if I can get a rope around your neck, I win, okay? Man or beast. So the thing, again, the mistake that you'll make with these high-strung dogs is when they break like that, go nah, 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 and jerk on them a bunch. And then they just get hectic and they'll sit there. And you see this a lot of times, guys. You'll see, that, you know, especially with dogs got electric collars on, the dog is sitting there ee, 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 whining and, you know, carrying on to, to get to go retrieve. And the guys will be like, oh, look at that drive. You don't need whiny, hectic behavior, okay, to have a good uh, retriever, and it's not an indicator that the dog has exceptionally high drive. What it is, is it's a good indicator that the dog is not uh, really good at being calm, attentive, and polite. Get up here, nerd. So, she has to wait here with slack in this small uh, little uh, slip lead. So, she's doing a pretty good job now, other than getting asked for that fly. So, I'm going to let her go get it. Hey, nerd, go get it. Now, I'm going to talk to her big. Lexi, come here. Good dog. Now, as she comes back, she might do that thing where she starts running around because she's going to think, hey, I'll go over here to George, and George won't make me work so hard to throw it. Okay, but George is going to ignore, and she's going to come around here, and at some point, I'm going to get her close to me. Come on. And I'm going to get a hold of this slip lead, and I'm going to walk this way, and I'm going to be calm and patient. Now, see how she's got it kind of hanging in her mouth sideways? I don't like to play like that. Okay, so I'm going to take it and I'm going to ask her to hold on to it. Little tension on my slip lead. I'm going to go back to my count, okay? And we're not going to play this game unless she gives me that count. So see how she spit that out? I'm no, I won't play with her like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I don't care about her laying down too much because I can always get her to come back up. Stay. When I can get slack in my slip lead, Lexi, go get it. And then, come on. Now, I would have not been surprised a bit if she would have ran over there to George. I'm not surprised that she runs around backwards. Sit. I don't like this presentation, so I'm going to take it away. Ask her to grip it again. Through three, four, five. And we'll go ahead and shorten this hold up to five for Georgie because I don't know that he can get ten. Good. Throw the retrieving item. I've got my little slip lead. Wait till there's slack. You see that? See how she tried to dart out and get it? Guys, she loves to fetch. I can't really get mad at her for wanting to go fetch, okay? But I'm not gonna let her go fetch. And that's what you have to understand is that a lot of things in the dog business a dog will do and like you'll unfairly judge them. I mean, you'll buy a dog with a lot of drive and then get mad at them because they're not good at being still. You know, and that's just, that's, that's, you just gotta, like you gotta lead by example. You have to be calm and focused and uh, that'll end up uh, making its way down to the dog. So I've got slack in my lead here. Lexi, she goes and gets it. Now just by bringing her over here into this position over and over again, uh, guys, that'll end up looking pretty fancy. These dogs are very pattern cognizant. You don't have to do a tremendous amount of talking or cajoling to get them over here. This is just the default position where you play this game. The dogs love the game so much, if this is where you put them, this is where they'll get to play the game. And she's doing pretty well. I want her to hold it just a little bit more in the middle. Take it, stay, three, four, five. Shorten that up a little bit, out. Okay, good. Very nice. All right, Georgie. So we'll let Georgie, okay. We'll let Georgie, <laughs> now right there, that's how your fingers get bit. You see what happened? Okay. Now, what do I do there? Do I get mad at her for almost getting my finger? No, I was watching her out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> so I moved that finger pretty quick. Uh, you, just, you just have to like keep, keep plugging away, keep moving forward. And George's mom is holding the camera. She doesn't even like these dogs because <laughs> she knows how often they, they lead to people bleeding. So, guys, if you, hear, if you hear me get smacked over here, that's George's mom smacking me for letting him uh, start training these dogs. Okay, Georgie, give her the item. Ask her to hold it for a count of five. Two, three, four, five. Ask her to release it. Good. Now, you're going to just toss it a ways and uh, be ready because she's gonna jerk. And the first time that you try this, if she jerks that leash out of your hand, no, don't do that. 
Never, guys, never put the loop of the leash around your wrist where you can't get your hand out of it. Because if uh, something weird happens, like for whatever reason, if your dog attacks you or it takes off after a rabbit and you're not paying attention, it will jerk your arm out of socket, okay? But just have a good grip and be ready for her to jerk that out of your, one of you has to win this. If she wins the first one, then she's gonna try to win the next 10. Okay, you ready? Be ready for her to jerk. Don't put tension on it yet. Okay, now, throw your retreat, not far, just a little ways. See, see, and you won that one, okay? Now go back to the slack. You have to go back to the slack because you're making her make the correlation between the, the slack and getting access to the retrieving item. Okay, can you see the retrieving item from there, cameraman? Come on up back this way towards me, please. Okay, Georgie, let her go. All right, now she's gonna run around and do some crazy stuff with George. She might try to spit that at him. She might drop it on the ground. And all she's doing there is she's saying, I wanna play, but I don't wanna play and with all those boring rules. I just wanna play the way I wanna play. And that's normal. Like if, if you guys have children, you know how they are with games. They always like to play the games <laughs> and they don't wanna follow all the rules. Okay, now see how she was mouthing on that the whole time, Georgie? You need to represent that, okay? And like send some good calm vibrations down that leash. Two, three, four, five. Make sure she'll hold it. Okay, when you get to your number, then take it. Ask her to let it go. Now you see right there at the end how she mouthed on it? Give it to her back. She's got it. Yeah, there you go. Two, three, four, five. Okay, be firm. Very good. All right, now toss that up here, back up a little bit, cameraman. And toss this uh, up here a little bit towards your mom. Very nice. Okay, release the dog. Good, make over a little bit. Very nice, not too much, not too much, because she's so excitable. If you make over her much, she's gonna like get super, go up here a little closer, look at that dog's mouth. Uh, if you make over her much, Georgie, she's gonna start spinning around you and mouthing on that dummy. Now, we do not want her holding that dummy at the end like that. So ask her to give it to you. Now, represent it in the middle. Stay easy. Two, three, four, five. Now, cameraman, move over to the side a little bit so that the next time you can get, uh, you can get uh, George getting her in that spot and show him the trouble he's having. Okay, take it, Georgie. Very nice. Toss it a little ways. Be ready for her to... One of the things that'll happen here, guys, about your fourth or fifth rep, sometimes the dogs will like be doing pretty well, and so you'll start to take for granted that they're going to do well, and that's when they'll surprise you and jerk that leash. See, there you go. They'll jerk that leash out of your hand. And if you're not prepared for that to happen, then you set yourself up for the next 10 or 20 repetitions for them to be looking for you to be off your game a little bit. Okay, Georgie. Very nice. Bring her into the spot. Be calm, but take your retrieving item and represent it. Good, stay. Two, three, four, five. Ask her to give it to you. Very nice. Good grip on your leash. Toss it a little ways. And retrieve. Very nice. Okay. Now don't fuss at them here. Don't cajole them too much here. Just be calm. These dogs love to fetch. They're going to try to get back in, in that spot. Now that was pretty good, pretty calm. So let's just work on the presentation. Give it back to her. Right in the middle. There you go. Stay. Very nice. All right, we're going to do one more rep. Now, for those of you uh, who've made it to this point in the video and you're wondering what this has to do with uh, protection dogs or guard dogs, listen guys, if you don't have a you know, good obedience on a dog, then you can't really use them for a good protection dog because you can't take them anywhere. They're not safe. All right, Georgie, one more time. 
with our dogs. You're going to hear this in every video, but we're going to talk about our goal is to maximize the deterrent value of the dog while minimizing the liability. Okay, very nice. Nice and calm. Good. Very nice. Okay, work on your presentation one more time. Good. Two, three, four, five. Take it. Okay, now put it back in your pouch. <laughs> and then let go of that leash and we'll try to <laughs> see if you... Okay, let her up, Georgie. And uh, now just watch him, camera van, as he walks. Okay, now if you're wearing your retrieving items on the back with these dogs, you got to watch out because they'll jump up there <laughs> and try to get them. All right, but that gets better with every time. Okay, we're going to get one more dog for George to work and uh, then we'll call it a day. All right, so we went in and we got Goose, and uh, Goose is a young Malinois puppy, and the one thing you'll notice about Goose is that uh, she's incapable of being still, uh, and she gets after uh, anything and everything. So here in a second, if my daughter comes out of the door, uh, Goose is gonna get after her, <laughs> and if my neighbors ride their four-wheeler by, she's gonna bark and lunge at them. So basically what Goose does is she gets up every day and comes out here and uh, <laughs> does some good obedience and, and puts in some good work, uh, and then she uh, tries to attack somebody. Okay, Georgie, so let's uh, go ahead and walk her around the course and show everybody how she's doing. Now, uh, Goose is another one of those dogs. Like, uh, you know how I talk about, uh, you know, the, the Malinois and the Dutch Shepherds being on steroids and crack. Uh, I think she's on steroids and meth and growth hormone and whatever else. She got gene therapy. <laughs> she is a wild character. And what really got Goose was... Uh, when her owners got her as a young puppy, uh, they bought a very well-bred Malinois if one wanted to do like uh, some type of work with the dog. And then they didn't do any work with her, right? And so like there was nothing done to curb her natural impulsiveness or her desire to chase and bite things. And so she doesn't know where to put that. And so she puts it on uh, kids riding scooters and uh, bicycles and my neighbor on his mower okay now she does learn fast she's super athletic i mean she's basically what we call a best and worst dog uh, if a person bought this dog to do a sport with or as a personal protection dog or a guard dog they would be super duper happy uh, for living in the suburbs she's a little bit tough on that you know um, now George is going to get her lined out though because she is uh, she's for us she's pretty cool I mean we like having her because there's nothing we ask her to do that she can't do she can jump the highest run the fastest get the most reps in she likes the food she likes attention she likes treats uh, she likes uh, tug she likes to fetch kind of and play fetch very well but she likes the thought of it okay so uh, we're going to kind of keep updating her uh, and uh, for you guys that uh, watch my Instagram, you saw the first day she came when she was acting like uh, she didn't have any sense. You know, I think I called her the Malinois Menace that day. And uh, she, she's kind of proven to live up to that little nickname I gave her. Uh, but she's doing a little bit better every day, so we're happy. Come around on the uh, A-frame here, Georgie. So Georgie's going to come up the little A-frame, have her wait. And uh, then down the A-frame over the mimic table and put her back on the exam table. Good, and basically what we have to do with this dog, guys, is just walk and walk and walk and walk. And you can see how, like, she just is constantly looking around, you know. So if you have this kind of dog and you're training it, you're going to have good days and bad get days. And uh, some days you're going to be amazed at how well she can learn something new, very pattern cognizant, very willing to work, um, and very intelligent. Uh, and then some days you're going to be really disappointed because somebody shows up where you're training and she doesn't like them and she decides to put them over in the threat category and she just can't concentrate because she's um, convinced that they're, they're trying to kill her you know all right well there's a little bit of work on the small challenges course now let's go down here and see what it's like trying to get this dog to fetch all right so george is going to try a little bit of fetching with goose and uh what 
Now, one of the things you'll notice is that Goose is not staying close to him like Lexi was. That's because Goose didn't have much experience outside uh, in an off-leash environment. And so, like, as soon as you drop her leash, she wants to run off and explore, and she's afraid that if she comes back that you're going to grab her leash. So let's see what happens. Just toss her retrieving item a little ways, George, and see what happens. Okay, so she gets the retrieving item, and George says, hey, come here for a second. And she says, nope, I'm going to run away. Yes. Now, so here's a mistake you'll make, guys. If you have a dog that doesn't know how to play fetch, then like, you start chasing them here or trying to grab at it. And when you go to grabbing at it, of course, they're going to want to take it away, you know? Okay, so back up, Georgie. Back up and bend down and call her and see if that makes it any easier. But, hey, don't be, don't be creepy weird about it. Just call her over to you. Now bend down a little bit and don't stare at her so much. Don't put that pressure on her. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and see if I can help Georgie out a little bit. Come on, Goose. So I'm going to bend down. Oh, little Goose. Come on, come on. Now, one of the things that you'll see, guys, when you're doing this kind of stuff, whoa, <laughs> is like the mistake George made when he was trying to play fetch with this dog is he was a little bit too linear with her, okay? In other words, uh, hold her leash, Georgie. In other words, when he was trying to get her to, to, to bring the item back, he's like trying to, like, come here, come here. Just think of like if you were a kid at the park, I've done this in other videos, it's like, hey, little girl, come here, come here, little boy. Let me, let me have your toy, little boy. I mean, we weird, right? You don't want to fool with that. So what I did is I came back out here and I called her and then acted like I was kind of doing something. And I gave her like a non-linear look and she ran right over to me. Now, once she got over close to me, like she wanted to play that game that they like to play, the dogs that haven't had much, uh, too much chance to fetch, where she started to dart off. But I had a leash on her and I'm pretty quick for an old man, so I snagged her up by this leash. Now, we're running into the same problem. See how she's got her paw on that? And see how she's grabbing it and shaking it? Okay, so if you're used to training labs and German short hairs and things like that, and you go to fooling with these dogs, that's why you get dog bit, right? If I reach down there to get that right now, she might bite me, which could lead me to believe that she bit me on purpose when most of the time they just bite you because they're trying to get back to their, you know, they're trying to get their retrieving item back. So I'm going to back up here. <laughs> And uh, I can either call her away from the retrieving item, okay, or I can take her back to the retrieving item and bring her to me, okay. Now, right here, she wants to play tug, and I don't want to play tug. So I'm just going to put some steady pressure on her leash and hold this thing kind of still and be like, hey, I'm not playing that way. And then when I say I'm not playing that way, then she'll, uh, you know, hopefully let it go. Now, they don't always let it go. You know, some of these dogs, Again, the mistake, nah, -uh. out, out, jerk, out, jerk, let go, out, jerk. That hecticness, you'll get a, you'll get a dog that's one, two, three years old. It's just in a, you know, in a pattern of, of kind of having to fight and, and put up with being jerked and yelled at uh, before it re lets go of that retrieving item. And uh, those dogs are, are tough to fool with. So when you use your retrieving item, okay, I want you to get your leash and I want you to be calm and confident. Now keep your fingers out of the way, but why don't you take your long line and put on her so that you have more control. Okay, so George has a long, <laughs> now again, that's what you got to watch with these dogs. That dog sees this, uh, you know, that long line come out and it's all wadded up. She's like, I'll, I'll fetch or tug that. All right, so I'm going to help Georgie. I'm going to put the long line on the dog for him. Whoa, nerd. All right, and then when you're using a long line, guys, you want to kind of pre-stage it. Go ahead and get it out make sure it's not tied up and it's not around your feet. Okay, now, George, you're going to throw your retrieving item and you're going to keep it pretty much within your area of long line ability. And when she gets close to you, like if you step on it, see how I've stepped on it here? Keep her from jumping up and getting your fingers so much. But you got to, you don't, see? Watch, give me that. So the mistake George is making, guys, you see him, he's like this or he's like this. Okay, if I put it here, where's the dog going to jump to? to my face. If I put it here, where is it going to jump to? Around here, I'm going to hurt my arm, or it's going to bite my arm. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to walk like normal, okay? Now, if this dog goes to trying to get it, I'm going to be normal. I'm going to be perfectly calm. I just, I've got the long line on her. I just step on her leash, and if she wants to jump up uh, and cause herself trouble, well, she can. But again, notice how I'm being calm. Another, I'm telling you, 
Big problem, guys. The dog, these dogs are going to jump up and bite at the retrieving items, okay? If your fingers are in the way, they're going to get your fingers. And then if you yell at them and fuss at them and fight with them, you're going down a path that uh, you better be ready to, to, to really stick to because you're going to have to fight with them for a long time. The key here, okay, is for you to be calm and focused, right? and confident and so I'm just she can be she can act silly all she wants but I'm not buying into that okay and so if I need to put a long line on her I'll put a long line on her and I'll stand on that long line I'm not gonna put my fingers in jeopardy you know so now she's being calm I'll throw my retrieving item within the the, the distance of the long line and then I'll move backwards and maybe kind of show her my side and I won't grab it in a linear fashion okay you know what a linear like straight line yeah. Okay, all right, now you got to watch this part. Okay, you got to really know where you put your foot. Okay, so I'm gonna get out of the way and let you do it. Again, George's mom is looking at me, giving me a mean look, <laughs> but uh, I think he'll be okay. I've survived all these years. Now, wait till, hey, yeah, wait till she likes his calm a little bit. Okay, you're not going to be able to hand that to her. You're not going to be able to get her to hand it to you politely. Uh, so these, the expectations for this dog is going to be different than the last dog, okay? What we'll be happy with just is if like, you can manage to throw the retrieving item and somehow get it back and keep your fingers. Now, see how you, see right there where you, you thought you had to say out again? Don't. This is a waiting game right here. Now, hold on a second. Now, when, when, you get your, when you get your retrieving item back, like you gotta think about that like fishing bait. You can't, you can't just flop it around. Now wait, now let your mom back up a little bit here. Okay, now she has to be, has to calm down a little bit. Step on your leash. It's harder than it looks, isn't it? <laughs> you got yourself turned around. Turn around this way, nerd. <laughs> You're embarrassing me in front of all the YouTube world. <laughs> Uh, turn around, step on that leash. <laughs> step on your leash, nerd. Do I need to come rescue you? No. No. All right, I'm going to come rescue him. We'll let him try it again. It. Yeah, I got it. Hey, okay. watch. Watch, let me see. You see that, that, see that when you take it away, are you getting that relaunch there? Let me see that. Oh. oh. So, see how the leash got all like worked around here, okay? Listen, these long lines are really aggravating and it takes years to get to where you can manage a long line, okay? And even then, you don't really manage them that well. So give me that, right? Hey, see that move there? You see, like, like she would do them like this. But I should be able to, whoa! You see, so as she chased it, you see what happened to her neck right there? Guys, learning how to step on a long line is an art because if you're off even an inch or two, then it won't work. So you got to, now see, remember earlier I was having you put a little bit of slack in the dog's lead? So I, I want to put some slack in the long line. I don't want to be holding her down, but I want to position it so that if she makes the mistake, I can take the retrieving item away. What the dog is willing to do is to endure a certain amount of discomfort to get the retrieving item, okay? So I can't count on just correcting the dog and making the dog act like it has some sense. What I have to do is put the retrieving item here. If she goes after it, not only is it a little bit uncomfortable, but she also creates distance between herself and the retrieving item. So the dog is willing to be uncomfortable to get the retrieving item, but it's not willing to be uncomfortable and lose access to the retrieving item. Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Right? Okay, so, whoa, <laughs> why would you do that? I mean, you know, does that seem like a fun way to play the game, you know? And so, like, okay. If I were you, I would sit down there and act like I've got some sense. Now, when she sits down there and acts like she has some sense, then I can throw the retrieving item. But I want her to understand that there's no boss in me. There's no just taking it from me. I want to be able to stand here and talk and, and, and have a good time, right? Okay, because if I can't talk, and have a good time with my friends, I ain't taking my dog with me. If I don't take my dog with me, then like, when's she gonna get the experience of how to be around people and to fetch and, and uh, otherwise be calm, attentive, and polite? So see, I should be able to stand here like this. I should be able to put this back in my pouch, you know, whatever it is. I put a little slack in her lead there. Nope. 
What are you doing? Why are you being so rude, dog? Now, this would not, this did not need to happen. If this dog would have been worked with well, since it was eight, nine, ten weeks old, none of this would be necessary. She would have good impulse control and good attention span. Okay, all right, you try it? All right, let me get out of the way. <clears throat> now see, so that's a little victory on her part. Now see, what? so what's happening there is George is miss. He's like, he's, he's, he doesn't understand the distance on his long line. And so the dog's jumping up, you know? So he's got to turn around this way to us, Georgie, a little bit so we can see what's going on. And don't put your hand down there. Now, block her off with your body there. Make her get in front of you where you need to be. Now you guys can kind of see. Look, now she's getting mad at him, biting his hole. Ah, ah, ah. All right, now. So this right here, guys, is where Malinois get a big reputation for being handler aggressive. As George is trying this technique, you see as she started getting mad at him and biting his, uh, biting his vest and, and biting at him, that would, that real quickly, if he didn't react to that, that would turn into biting his skin, okay? Now, these guys are ornery. Come here, dog. Okay, so watch. I'm gonna do it again. I might, I might have to do it for George till she's tired. All right, so like watch see how that time like she goes to doing this nonsense whatever she's doing trying to get here you see i've got the perfect amount of leash there so that she can't get away and then notice too that like when she goes to making her little like uh, fit movements i'm not like looking weak you know i'm like hey look you're going to do what I want you to do eventually. I know that and you're soon to know it. So we might as well just go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay. And by me being super calm, it helps with the dog. Notice she's not biting my vest and stuff. Okay. And she's picking on George because George is not sure what to do. Okay. So if you guys get yourself in that position, like what George just got himself in, where the dog starts to get frustrated and nipping at your shorts or your vest, just cut your session short and uh, go over to your mentor trainer and say, hey, look, this dog's getting a little bit out of control. Never be afraid to admit that the dog is getting a little bit out of control because that's how you're going to get bit. And if you get bit, then you're going to be nervous the next time. I mean, it's just going to be a, just going to be a big deal, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, like uh, make this dog stay here for a second. I'm actually going to throw this retrieving item and make her stay. Uh-uh. And so she's going to fight me here. Look, see, she's fighting me. No. And I'm just going to let her know. No. That she can be mad. She can be excited. She can do whatever, like, fit throwing she wants. But until, like, she makes at least some progress towards being calm, attentive, and polite, I'm not going to let her access that. Now, she's doing okay here. I mean, you know, not fantastic, but okay. Okay. Good. Now I'm going to get here on my long line. Come on, come on. Watch out, Georgie. Come on. Good dog. I bend down. I'm going to back up, and I'm going to try to get her to come over here from the side a little bit. Now, see that See that head shaking? Uh, that's a big trait that they breed for with these Malinois, so I'm not mad at her for doing that. She's a good dog, you know, very good dog, but uh, I want her to pick that up and hand it to me. Come on. Come on. Oh, come on. Very, ah, very nice. Wait. Go back here like this. I'm going to flop it around here a little bit. Again, I got the perfect amount of like uh, slack in this leash. And you guys might say, well, Stoney, why are you doing it this way? Why not the way you do it with the labs? Well, because this isn't a lab, number one. And number two, I'm trying to teach George about traditional dog training as it relates to guard dogs and personal protection dogs. Guys, these dogs are not the same as the dogs you watch on YouTube that uh, people are just like putting their little halters on and walking them around and going, watch me, watch me, watch me. This is a dog selectively bred to chase and bite people, okay? It's a very dangerous animal. And if you're going to buy this kind of dog, then you need to understand uh, the breed specific tendencies of the dogs, the physical characteristics, attributes, and abilities, and you also need to understand traditional dog training because if you don't understand traditional dog training, this dog will get ahead of you and it'll end up hurting somebody. And that's just as, that's as simple as I can put it, okay? You know, now watch, I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna tell this dog that I want it to stay here. I'm gonna throw the retrieving item. Uh uh, uh uh. Nah uh. Nah uh. 
and it's not going to get access to the retrieving item until I have slack in this leash and I have some semblance of calm, attentive, and polite. Okay. Now I can't get her to be super calm, attentive, and polite like Henry or No Name. Okay. But I can get her to not be trying to bite George or I, you know, pulling on my leash here. See, she's doing pretty well. Okay. I'm gonna get my long line. Come on. Very nice. Come on. Come on. I'm gonna back up. Kind of get her to approach me from the side. As she approaches me from the side, I'm going to step on her leash. Hey, that's enough of that. Out. Good. Get the appropriate amount of distance so I can step on her long line. Stay there. No. Back on up there, cameraman. Now she's going to come throw a fit a little bit here. Nope. She's going to have to calm down. Okay, fetch it up. Very nice. Bend down. Back up. Bring her into the side. Come on, nerd. Come on. Oh. Good. She goes to tugging. I'll stand on my leash. Out. A little bit better. Okay, we're going to give George one more chance at it. Okay. And I want you to watch because she's probably, most likely, she's going to go back. We'll, we'll walk back up this way a little bit. But she's probably going to go back to being frustrated and maybe even trying to nip at George. Uh, the only way George is going to be able to prevent that is like by really bucking up and uh, being confident and understanding the distance on the long line. You notice I don't drop my hand here unless my foot is positioned properly in the long line. Now George is left-handed, so it makes it a little bit, a little bit more awkward. But we're gonna, I'm gonna move out of the way. Okay. Now just practice walking around up there with your retrieving item, or just moving your. There you go. That just practice that a minute. There you go. Die, see, see how you threw your hand over there in her mouth, kind of like to push her out of the way. You, you, you can't do that because she's liable to snap at that hand. You got to use your body, you know. Very nice. Now move your retrieving item around. Okay, good. Now, okay, so let's back up just a little bit here, cameraman. Move your foot back just four or five inches there, Georgie. Good. Now toss your retrieving item. Make sure she's on the right side of you. Now, okay, so what happened there? Go ahead and call her back and get your long line back up. So what happened there, guys, another problem you run into when you're using traditional techniques is like how much pressure do you have to put on the long line? And it's a little different from dog to dog. Stand up now and then let her come from the side. Drop your long line. Stand on it. Hold your long line in the opposite hand. There you go. Now, see those fast movements that you're making? You gotta be slow and deliberate unless she goes to get it. Okay, there you go, good. And just wait. Now see, that's the second time in a row that she's beaten George. Second time in a row. Okay, I have it. Now, I'm gonna take back over. Okay, because what happened there, I don't know if you saw it on, uh, on the TV or not, but George got bit on the arm. Okay, and again, go back and slow this down, and you'll see that as George is trying to work with the dog, he just is, he just his hands are getting in the wrong spot a little bit, and like uh, his dummy's getting in the wrong spot. This is an art, guys. You, 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 people buy these dogs, and they think that you know you just come home after work and, and get your clicker out. And you got a superhero dog that'll protect you against evildoers and do tricks and jump high over walls and stuff. You know, go back, look at your search history and see what was in most of those videos. It was one of these dogs doing something crazy to go bite somebody that's dressed up in a suit, okay? You bought a dog that's bred to chase and bite people. So don't be surprised when you're working with them if they're not chasing and biting you sometimes or your daughter or your neighbors, okay? So like everything that I'm doing here Okay, you'll notice as I'm baiting this dog into making that same mistake it made with George, but my movements are a little bit, uh, like a little bit more confident and uh, a little bit more like fluid, where George is a little herky-jerky. 
And I don't know how many of you guys fish, but if you fish, then you know, like, like to get a fish, you move things like your herky jerky. And if you'll go back and you'll watch all the bite work videos that convinced you that you wanted one of these dogs, watch the guys that are wearing the sleeve or wearing the suit. They're doing herky jerky movements. Okay. So the dog again was selectively bred to chase and bite things when they make her uh, people when they make herky jerky movements. So be careful in your training not to be making those herky jerky movements. So I'm going to throw my retrieving item. No. And she can be mad. She can whine. She can lunge. She can do whatever she wants. But I'm not giving her access to that retrieving item until she shows me that she's making some progress towards uh -uh, being calm, attentive, and polite. Nah. -uh. Slack in the leash. Guys, if you get your Malinois puppy from eight weeks old, make it understand that it has to be compliant. It doesn't get access to things without being calm, attentive, and polite. People say, well, Stoney, that'll hurt its drive. It will not hurt its drive, right? That would be like saying if you want to have a star basketball player or a star football player, you can't make them have good table manners. That's completely silly. Don't, don't even believe it, okay? Manners are the most important things in owning a dog. Uh -uh. Just gonna have to wait. Now you might say, "Well, Stony, why don't you make her sit or lay down?" Uh, just to be honest with you, I can't. Like I can tell her to sit, and then I might even be able to wrestle her into sitting, but like I can't keep her there. So I have to, I have to take my victories where I can. Which right now, if she's not biting me uh, and she's waiting patiently, I'm gonna consider it a victory. And then next week I'll get a sitter down. You know? Okay, okay, go get it. Very nice. <laughs> She goes to run off, but I've got her on the long line. Now I'm gonna bring her back up and I'm gonna bring her to my side. Come on, nerd. Get my dummy. And uh, now see, at that time she let go real easily. I'm gonna step on my leash. Now she beat me right there. So I made a mistake with my foot placement. So I'm gonna replace my foot. Nope. Uh uh, not how you get things around here, dog. Uh uh. Hey, and for whichever you lollygaggers out there that's going to tell me something about this dog, uh, like neck being sore. Listen, this dog has tried to bite about ten people here, right? Okay, so my concerns over her neck being a little bit sore uh, is absolutely zero because she's either going to have a sore neck for a little while or she's going to end up getting put to sleep. So don't be writing me with your stuff from Tufts University and all those people that never really trained a dog, right? Okay, I don't want to hear it. We do this one more time, and then we're going to hand this off to George. We're going to give him one last chance. All right, stay there now. Uh-uh. Nope. Fetch it up. Go ahead. Fetch it up. Get my long line. Come on. Come on. I'm going to move backwards. I'm going to try to bring her over to my side. Come on, nerd. Very nice. Now, I got it pretty easy. I'm going to stand here because I knew. You see what I just, I knew that was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen, so I was already prepared. See, I did that, Georgie? I moved out of the way. Now, these movements, guys, I'm not telling you to do this. You will get dog bitten if you fool with these kind of dogs, so don't do it. I'm just telling you, you don't. Like, if you don't have a, some professional supervision, don't even fool with this because you will 100% get uh, bitten. This is like learning how to box. When you learn how to box, you got to learn how to hold your hands, you got to learn how to move your head. But for any of that to work, okay, you got to get hit sometimes. And that's how a person learns to be good with these dogs. You get bit some. Like Georgie got bit earlier. His mom is still evil eyeing me, but I'm going to give him one more chance because I feel deep down in my soul that Georgie's got a certain amount of natural talent <laughs> and that he can, uh, he can get this done in this session. Very nice. Okay, we're gonna make her wait one more time, Georgie. Little bit, little bit of slack in your long line. Okay. Now I don't feel like you've got a good grip on your long line with your ball. Is it ball of your foot? Drive it into the ground. Now tell her to wait there and throw your long line. Throw your, throw your retrieving idol. Okay. All right. That's all right. Okay. Good. Back up. Back up. Call her to you. You're only bending down to get her close to you. And then you're going to take the retrieving item from your side while you're moving. Good. Come on, come on. 
There you go. Now reach down and get it as she comes past you. Very nice. Don't snag at it. Just there you go. Very nice. Now step on your leash. Now just tell her, set her out. Don't make it a tug of war. I'll come help you. Just stand there, stand there. Nah. -uh. Now see, you guys see the difference there when I walk up close to the dog. See how she let that go. Nah. -uh. Let me see it. And uh, go ahead. And that's what you guys will run into when you're at, like when you're working with your professional trainer. And like I said, this is not an amateur do-it-yourself job. You need a professional trainer to help you with this. But like you'll be working with her never hesitate to ask your trainer to come over and supervise or watch you because they're going to treat the professional trainer with more respect because he's been there and he's done that and he's not intimidated by their little movements right he can read their movements pretty well you know after you've been around these dogs a lot and it's been a while since I fooled with them but like these guys that are around these dogs a lot they know what the dog's going to do well before the dog knows what's going to do most of the time okay and the way they learned that was by getting dog bit okay so like George having some problems and then I had to come up here and uh, kind of take over now this doesn't mean that the dog doesn't like George okay it, it just means that the dog is not really like particularly interested in going out of its way to play with George in a polite uh, calm and attentive manner okay that'll come so if your dog bites you like if you have this kind of dog don't think it hates you right it uh, doesn't hate you it loves you it just uh, you know doesn't think it has to treat you with respect and that's what a professional trainer will show you how to get from your dog is some respect Alrighty, guys y'all tune in we'll uh, make another one of these videos next week and uh, we'll try to do probably six or eight weeks of this in a row all right i'll see y'all later